Hi everyone. Welcome to Egypt 2023 Alpha Chi Omega. Very excited to uh, be here with our faculty. We've got lots of people joining us uh, from around the world. We're down to less than two weeks that uh, I'm going to be leaving to go to Egypt and this is going to be a very, very exciting trip. Uh, we have a lot of kind of logistics things to, uh, to take you through. The schedule has been finalized. We have our faculty here on the call with us. Uh, I'll have them all introduce themselves in a moment, but with some late breaking news, I'll say that uh, in the last few days, uh, my work and Alan Green's work have kind of converged to solve the mystery of the Giza Plateau from a, a geometric perspective. We're going to be unveiling this and really the plans of the original architect um, across the entire plateau will be unveiling it during our trip in Egypt. And, uh, and Alan, what was the way you described uh, how significant this is? Well, working title for now is we're calling it Giza, the Grail of Geometry, which uh, is not uh, hyperbole. I think you've basically got here the blueprint of how the plateau was originally designed in one fell swoop. It, it knocks on the head the whole idea that it was Khufu, then it was a Sun Khafre, then it was Menkori, and that these were done at different times. I think the, the overall solution shows that this, is, this was a predetermined, pre-mapped out design, and uh, between us we've managed to uh, put it into one overall very, very simple um, presentation. I will be giving it in uh, three separate presentations i think so far we've decided robert let's mm -hmm. let's do it in three because there's the first the, the solution to finding khufu then finding kafre then finding menkori and finding how they all slot together plus the overhead view of the entire uh, map out of, of of the plateau it's very exciting i think it's a game changer a paradigm shifter it doesn't uh do uh anything to to hurt all the all the work that has gone before it's just a cohesive whole is saying oh well, look that's how it was designed it was very simple very beautiful and i think people will have their socks knocked off them and it's all based on metatron's cube shockingly so uh, i think that's uh something that's been in the public consciousness collective consciousness for a long time and, um, and now coming out, and also what's beautiful about it is it points us to musical interval and ratio, which is going to be also an amazing part of this revelation that we're going to be doing on this trip. So this is going to be a big reveal. Uh, and I think it's going to inform for us, I look at these musical relationships as keys, like keys on a piano keyboard. We talk about the keys of Metatron, the keys of Enoch, the keys of Melchizedek, the keys of Solomon. Maybe they're all related, and maybe they're all related to music. And the way I'm tending to look at the Giza Plateau right now is that it's a giant musical clock with a time capsule that's under the left paw of the Sphinx. It's a deep and profound comment to basically make on that. And I'd love to hear Larry's, uh, he, doesn't, he hasn't seen this yet, but I've talked to him a little bit about it, about this idea of music and maybe the secret chord that pleased the Lord, the minor fall and the major lift. Larry, Larry Paul, who's also on our faculty. Go ahead, Larry. Well, the first thing is, you know, I've, I've just written a book on the Sphinx that I, to this point, just given to my tourists, but I've got a publisher that's very interested in it. And in there, I say that uh, I have discovered the archive and uh, the Hall of Records. And, uh, you know, uh, Manu Seifseda in, his, in the, the most recent uh, thorough study of the Sphinx called Under the Sphinx says, there's evidence in the Coptic records that that archive under the Sphinx was breached and it's not there now. So I'm gonna be very inter interested to see what you've got because there very well could be something uh, there. So I'm interested in that. But uh, on the question of music, just because of what you've leaked already I already started to design the Giza Plateau with piano keys. And uh, I'm gonna try and get Will or somebody to turn it into a game. Cause you press the key and that one's the, the Great Pyramid. And then you press this key and so you'll see it. But it's, I think that's great. The music of the spheres that's always been talked about. 
There were spheres on top of the pyramids, some people say. The music of the spheres. It's beautiful, uh, Robert, looking to see what you guys are going to show us. Great oh, idea. Good idea, Larry. That's great, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to... I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to actually reduce this all the way down to a song. Well, at least a uh, full-fledged Broadway musical. Let's let's let's, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's just put it that way. You know, you, you know what, Ellen? I'm expecting that from you because I was telling Robert uh, a long time ago, before the internet, a concert pianist in uh, France, Madame Hike Ventura, wrote a book called "The Music of the Psalms," and she claims that the Psalms have the musical direction on how to put them into music right in the vowel pointings in the Hebrew text. And since that was before the internet, she included in the book a, a, an LP, a, a record, and she played examples from the Hebrew text that she says were there. So you guys, there is, there is a song on that Giza Plateau. Alan, I want to hear you play it. <laughs> You're on mute, Alan. Sorry. Uh... It doesn't take much of a leap because, of course, uh, the musical intervals uh, are, are all basic. They're, so they are inherent in geometry. So it makes sense that they would fit naturally within a perfect geometrical structure at, at Giza. Um, they've already got the setup there. I mean, I, I'm sure most of us have already seen the, the, the sound and light show at, at the Giza Plateau. Uh, you know, it's great lights. It's great. You know, it's a great setting. But they just, got, unfortunately, a completely wrong story. But aside from that... Um, <laughs> you know, if they get the story right, this could be a hit. Uh, so it's always been a dream of mine to put on a musical there that, that told the, the real story. And now all of a sudden it really is coming into, into focus because not only is that uh, just a, a musical idea, but it fits mathematically, geometrically with the whole structure. So I will certainly be uh, working on that with great great passion because it's probably the best musical we could possibly put on. The one that tells the, the entire story of the structure of mathematics, geometry, music, ratios in creation. And it's the perfect and, place. And to maybe a remembrance of who we are. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's been done, you know, a few times. Roger Waters has done major, major uh, musical events. Well, for instance, obviously, when the wall came down, Grateful Dead were there at Giza doing a concert um, where they actually believed that they were going to levitate the Great Pyramid. Of course, they were all on acid, so, you know, that might, might have had to do with it. But, uh, <laughs> but without the aid of external influences, I think we could do something on a par. <laughs> I'm in full agreement on that. So... Look, the name of our trek um, is Alpha Chi Omega, and this is the 2023 version of that. Um, and, you know, we did it, Alpha Chi Omega in 2020, and then it was Alpha Chi Omega in 2021, and now we have it in 23. And the reason why Alpha Chi Omega is the name is because we're literally on the hunt for the Alpha Chi Omega everywhere we go. Now, last time we discovered many on our last trips. Um, in fact, also, I went back again in April of 2022 and discovered 12 Alpha Chi Omegas on the backside of the sarcophagi. Out of the 24 sarcophagi that are in the Serapium, I found Alpha Chi Omega on 12 of, the, 12 of them and confirmed them. And I had the director of, uh, of all Egyptology of Saqqara with me when I discovered it. And he asked me, he said, you need to come back here and stay with us for a month so we can find all the rest of these. And uh, we just didn't have time because they were closing and we didn't get to confirm it on the other 12, but I'm positive that they're also on the other 12. Yeah. On the backside of every one. We also discovered the Alpha Chi Omega at the Assyrian. So these are the oldest sites in Egypt. How many of you were here with us when we discovered the Alpha Chi Omega on the wall of the Assyrian temple in Abydos? Right. So we were there. And uh, and so that's what this trek is. We're finding flowers of life. We're flower finding, um, you know, Alpha Chi Omega virtually everywhere. And Alpha Omega was also found uh, in, uh, in uh, by Larry Paul. I found Alpha Omega on the rim of the sarcophagus. Larry found one in one of the shafts that he'll be able to tell, tell us all about as well. And there's also one in the antechamber. 
There's an alpha omega in the antechamber. So we're starting to see these signatures all over the place. And I believe it goes all the way back to Arcturians. That these letters, if you look at the, uh, the logo that is believed to be the logo on the side of the, 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 the ship Athena for the Arcturians, it is an Alpha Chi Omega. So that's the sort of mother ship. So I believe that this is much older than any writing we have in Egypt or Greece. And everyone gets stuck on this because we understand and falsely believe that time is linear. I don't believe that time is linear. I think that's what we're waking up to. That we're starting to realize now that time actually loops. What we consider our distant past might actually be our distant future. So this is an adventure of adventures. You're with us. We, even if you're just joining us virtually, uh, you might see things that we don't see. So we want you to point them out to us. On the last trip, we discovered over 200 new different petroglyphs and things all over the place, you know, in the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber. We're seeing now all the walls are covered with petroglyphs in both the Queen's Chamber and the King's Chamber. And uh, this is something I believe what's really happening is it's not that the pyramid is changing. It's that our perception and our eyes are opening, that these are all higher dimensional and that it requires a different level of consciousness to be able to perceive it. So every time I go in there, I see more. This is why I spend so much time on geometry, because geometry expands your perception. If you haven't started a practice yet of geometry and meditation, then please, please, please do so. I highly recommend it. It will change how you perceive the world around you. So I'd like to now go ahead and have everybody on, the, on this faculty group introduce themselves and, uh, and just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're going to be doing on the trip. And we'll start with Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? My name is Jason McLeod, originally from Scotland. I've been working with Robert since 2019 as his personal security and uh, security for the company overall. On this trip, I'm going to be helping to manage the security and the logistics. Um, so I'm looking forward to meeting you all. Great. Kat. Hey, I'm Kat, um, or Catherine. <laughs> I'm an intimacy therapist. And Delphine, uh, there was go, some go static. Ahead, go ahead, Kat. There was some static. Go ahead, Kat. So I'm an intimacy therapist. I specialize in nervous system regulation and intimacy, and I'm going to be helping reconnect and reestablish you to the sacredness of sex and intimacy so you can have a love story with your experience in the pyramids and all of the sacred sites that we'll be discovering. Excellent. Great to have you. Andrea. Hey everyone, um, I'm Andrea. This will be my fourth time in Egypt with Robert. Um, we met in Egypt along with some members in the sky. We saw that trip, so hopefully if they want to come and uh, visit again on this trip, that would be cool. Um, hey Andrea, Andrea, one thing I learned last night, I saw Phil Anthony, who was on the last trip with us. You oh, remember cool. And he told me something I didn't know from the last trip. So he said to me, this is kind of amazing. While we were in the pyramid, he said he was walking outside of the pyramid with mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte, who was also on the trip last mm -hmm. time. And she said, look up at the stars. And he looked at the stars and they all started moving in formations. So same, same story. So it sounds like we have a template to cook that up again, because that's how it starts. Uh, the first time it was like Robert showing us, oh, that's, that's uh, you know, Orion's Orion. belly. Actually, it might have been Orion. Um, mm -hmm. That's in Taurus, this and that. And then we all were like, um, are they supposed to be moving? No. Cool. And then it just began this like beautiful procession. So nice little confirmation that the work that we're doing um, with the heart led intention um, is approved. There's a consensus across the nodal network of that galaxy. Um, so I'll be supporting integration in all ways, uh, getting us in our bodies, both uh, participants in person and our virtual past uh, travelers um, with sound and movement and ceremony, along with a lot of the brilliant feminine pillars we have on this trip to integrate a lot of the mathematics and, and geometry that we're getting, you know, we'll, we're here to hold it down to, to bring it into the body. So like a five point check in of 
continuously because guess what guys whether home or here you you signed up this is this is initiation this is um this is huge so mind body breath emotions and energy throughout the trip thank you naomi hey guys i'm naomi um i've been working for robert for two years now in the math research um so i'm really interested in like the uh, cryptography and compression but also a lot of like more abstract stuff like geometry and number theory um this will be my first time in egypt and it's been a lifelong dream so i'm super excited to join you guys on this journey she's a mathematician research mathematician and a musician which is, uh, which is great. She's been a fantastic addition to our team for the last couple of years. And Eden. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Eden, and I support Robert in all things brand, company. She's the maestro on this trip. <laughs> um, I do my best. So uh, this will be my third time to Egypt with Robert, and honestly, it's one of the most special places I've ever been to. So um, I made a very lame joke late, uh, a few days ago that I probably won't be returning. So, yeah. <laughs> Why would you make that joke? Because I love it so much there. That's oh, you might. You might, oh, I thought you were saying <laughs> you'll never return to Egypt. You're saying you might not hey. return to the U.S. <laughs> Oh, okay. Got it. That makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. Great. So, Tiago. Hey, everyone. My name is Tiago. I'm from Brazil. This will be my second time in Egypt with Robert and this amazing group. And I'm really excited. And I, I know this is a transformative experience. Uh, for me, it was a life changing experience, absolutely. And this time, we will continue to explore all this information with all this group and i know when we come along with uh, all these people that that have great ideas have different point of views that will complement the other views and our views as well uh, we we got to to start a new way of seeing things and we share our perspectives so that is a powerful gathering uh, of research, it's an honor to be part of this group, and me and Gabriel will be broadcasting all the, you know, the sites that we go, all the information, so all of the virtual explorers uh, won't lose anything special that we'll be doing there, and also we are making um, a lecture about fractal geometry, hermeticism, and sacred geometry. Uh, me and Gabriel are the founders of the Fractal Science Institute, and we are together in this mission to spread sacred geometry and simplify it so people can, uh, you know, like be part of it and, and, and put our together in the same level of understanding because we know that it's uh, a little bit complex when it comes to Robert and Alan's uh, lectures or, you know, go deep, very deep in these subjects. So it's a pleasure to be part of it. And yeah, you guys can uh, count on me and anything. Thank you, Tiago. Gabriel. And by the way, Tiago also manages several pages uh, called uh, Geometria Sagrada. So many of you probably follow that. Uh, and then he's got different English versions and you know, Spanish versions, etc., of those pages. And then Gabriel also manages uh, geometry in nature, so geometry dot in dot in nature, as well as light is consciousness that many of us all know very well. Will Wire. Hello, everyone. My name is Will Wire. Uh, I'm an artist, designer, a bit of a puzzle maker, all around dreamer, I guess. I, I'm really, really grateful to be part of this group. This will be my third trip back to Egypt. Um, I started working with Robert three or four years ago and kind of came at it from that, that stance of an artist, seeing balance and number and fitting that into shape and geometry and how all those linkages tell us much, much more than just what's at that surface level. So it's amazing to see and hear from everybody on this panel here. I, I think you guys have an amazing group of, uh, of minds and perspectives. Um, the thing I will share because Kathleen brought it up was, oh, sorry, Catherine, sorry, brought it up was that uh, the love story 
that is what this is for me because everything that I've found in my research, my inclination as to what's going on in this experience that we're in is written in the pyramid. It's written in stone. The angles, the measure, the, the ratio, the void, what's there, what's not. It's just such an amazing, amazing thing. And we're part of a crew here who's, who's working to bring that back to the surface. And I think we've got the keys. So looking forward to it. Let's do this thing. <laughs> And actually, many of the people on our trip, including Eden, she's actually discovered stuff that's been very significant in the pyramid. She discovered the phoenix on the wall above the bull and the cow, both of which are found in the Last Supper painting, the exact same side wall, uh, which is pretty fascinating stuff. So this is really an adventure expedition where if you keep your eyes peeled, you will discover something. Go ahead, Taylor. Hi everyone, I'm Taylor O'Sullivan. I am a filmmaker and photographer. I've been working with Robert for over 10 years, creating short documentaries, long documentaries, and my role on this trip, I'm part one of two of the media team, so myself and Tim Sekiguchi, you'll see us juggling many cameras throughout the day, so we'll be filming documentary content and documenting this trip for posterity. And I'm so excited to be back in Egypt uh, for the third time. I'm really excited to meet all of you. And and she's engaged to her partner, so I have to hire them in a like coupling <laughs> deal all the time. It's amazing. There's always got to be two camera people. So uh, Taylor also did a beautiful job on my uh, on my documentary that's on the landing page of my website, and uh, that was a labor of love. And she did a phenomenal job there. So thank you. And Tim, go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Sekiguchi. I am, yes, engaged to Taylor O'Sullivan. Thank you for that, Robert. <laughs> um, but we are the, the tag team duo who is filming this entire trip. We are just so, so excited to come along for this journey. It is my third time in Egypt, uh, my second time with this team, and it is nothing but nonstop fun and excitement and adventure the entire way. And um, you'll see us popping up at all the best moments. And we're excited to see what happens this time around and see what we discover. Absolutely. And Alan Green. Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Green. I am the uh, Renaissance cryptographer of the team. And uh, every team needs one, of course, uh, because time doesn't exist. And so I'm tying <laughs> together the connections between uh, the great masses of the past who have known and brought this information to the fore and are helping us now, such as Da Vinci, such as John Dee, such as Shakespeare, etc., etc. This would be my fifth trip to Egypt. Unfortunately, I won't be with you physically because uh, I'll be here in the studio putting the finishing touches on three major uh, videos that are all going to come out concerning the work that Robert and I have been doing that he introduced us to at the beginning. Uh, Giza, the grail of geometry. Uh, but uh, I'll be giving uh, by Zoom three of those presentations in, in their sort of live form and then here in the studio I'll be uh, putting all the music and effects to it so that we've got a really, really beautiful presentation waiting for when everybody gets back. Uh, everyone except Eden, of course, who's staying there. So uh, I think <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, uh, sad for me not to be there because I would love to be meeting you all in, in person, but that doesn't really matter. Our spirits are together. We'll be having a blast, and I look forward to uh, sharing all this new information uh, with you. One last thing, uh, Robert, it's, you said uh, we did a trip in 20, in 21, and now 23. So I think this one's going to be very special because add them all up and what do you get? 64. I'm just saying. <laughs> those, of you, those of us who know the Tetractus and uh, the work that's associated with that will understand the significance. Something major is going to happen. Have a blast. See you there. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Um, and Larry. So uh, my, my name on Instagram is Sage Silent. I was thinking when Will talked about how Will said you were the ones that articulate all these uh, things that are there in the Great Pyramid, especially Will and I made some discoveries in the Great Pyramid. 
Sage Silent, sometimes people call me the Sage as if my Instagram name was me. I, I picked that name, Sage Silent, because I think the Great Pyramid is the Great Sage. All of Giza and all of Egypt, but specifically it seems to focus on the Great Pyramid. And it's silent unless we articulate what's there. And uh, this will be my uh, 13th tour of Egypt. I've been in there hundreds of times, uh, made some discoveries. As Robert said, I, I discovered an Alpha and Omega. That's one uh, connection that Robert and I have. And, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to the talk I'm going to give on the Great Pyramid. I was taking notes and I just going over, I discovered so many things, just going over things I'd forgotten. It's such a marvelous revelation. And so, in a sense, in describing myself, I was thinking about this. I really am a servant to, to the higher power that's there. Because I was, uh, I used to teach political science at the college level. I taught uh, civics and world history at the high school level. Always had an interest in the Great Pyramid. And the reason I have top level domain names, greatpyramid.info, greatpyramid.org, greatpyramid.us, is because I, I, when the internet started, I was there. I used to come up number one. Great. If you did a search for Great Pyramid anywhere in the world, my page came up number one. That was before Google. <laughs> then when I got into teaching, uh, you know, that stopped. But I, I, I left what would be my calling. I'd be a freedom fighter putting out posts like Robert just did about Pfizer, you know, fighting big pharma. That would be what I would be doing. But I left that. I left my background to really engage as a servant in searching out the higher knowledge that's at Giza. And I love it. I, I love it. I love it. But, but I, I, I think I'm a voice for something that I didn't invent. Uh, it's just a great thing that's there. So thanks, Robert, for letting me be part of this team. Thank you, Larry. And uh, Delphine Diallo. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a photographer and visual artist. Uh, I'm based in New York and uh, my work for the last 12 years is to actually unfold um, the, you know, the, the, the limited perception that society put on, on a body as a woman, as a female. So my work is specifically focusing on um, the female body uh, and, a divine, and a divine temple, a templar, as we speak at the beginning when Robert was mentioning the new discovery of Giza. Uh, for the last 12 years, I studied Kung Fu, um, Qigong, um, many other tools and practice uh, with surrounded by musicians, sounds, and I, I, I work on my self transformation a lot. I travel the world to find out uh, more um, connection within um, my transformation when it comes to my perception of my body and as well of my reality. And the work that I'm doing for 12 years, which is portraiture specifically, um, is actually body and following the knowledge of the Renaissance time painting, where I, I felt um, that timelessness, which is Alan Green mentioned, there's no time, time doesn't exist. Um, I enter this space of timelessness for the last 12 years, uh, freeing myself from, uh, from a system who, um, who actually puts you on the clock. And that's the first mission I did, and then after that, I really tried to make sure that I was uh, visualiz visualizing myself, uh, self portraiture but as well my friends, to be able to create that um, that space, right? That timelessness space where I'm able to explain what's happening to me inside. So he, through my work that we, I'm going to show, I'm going to actually as well um, show you um, some um, Qigong practice and forms where we can uh, learn together to harness energy together. Because this is not a, a lone word. Like a lot of people, what we mentioned, uh, um, we do, we're doing a work on our own, but as Robert came to me, as uh, around me, I'm working on, with a lot of people, a lot of um, magic people around me, um, very wise uh, women specifically that I work with for many years uh, into their craft men, their craft women. And we don't even use this word as much, but our discussion, our evolution, which, which is uh, a space in society and a space into that that maze or that greed, it's something that um, I'm very curious to discover more and more um, with this trip. I'm very excited to be a, a part of it with a crazy mathematician and scientist, um, <laughs> which I'm other part, like a fully on, a creative, intuitive, imaginative, 
you know, mine. So I cannot wait to to meet both. Excellent. Thank you so much, Delphine and uh, Talal Guadam. Hi all, my all right. name is Talal Ganam. I'm can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah, my name is Talal yes, Ganam. I'm a you. physicist and scientist. I've been working with Robert. Yeah. Okay. I've been working with Robert for a few years. This is my second trip to Egypt. Um, it's an amazing place. Um, last time we went out to see all the pyramids. Now this will be different. We we'll go on the Nile and see all all the uh, temples there. Um, I'm interested in, in numbers and the geo, the form they make. Um, and on the trip, I will have a lecture and be explaining my theory on geonumer what I call geonumeronomy, where I explain how numbers and the geometry they make uh, can explain the universe. And we can also create the physical ether from there. Um, and uh, I will also include some of the Egyptian, Egyptian like related materials to my my work and um, yeah it will be I think a great work trip and uh, nice meeting you all and Talal is also the co-author with me on uh, on Philomath and if you haven't had a chance yet to get uh, to get Philomath and Polymath do yourself a favor get the books so that you can uh, you know know what's going on with this whole thing. I think it's uh, definitely going to be a help for you. If, uh, if you read these books, you'll understand a lot of the conversations a lot better. So if there's one thing I could ask each of you to tell us why you're excited to go to Egypt, what would it be? So let's just go with each person. So Larry, why are you excited for this trip? You've been so many times. Well, you know, uh, because I've always been rushed and kind of doing things I'm not supposed to, I haven't really been able to document my the Alpha and Omega that I discovered. And I'm hoping that, you know, I'll be able to just get in there and, and get a feel for exactly where it is in the uh, entrance passage and do the type of measurements you did with your Alpha and Omega. You showed one of the arguments you give as to why your Alpha and Omega you think is from the from the uh, uh, designers of the pyramid, not some Greek edition later or something, is because you show by the numbers, the incredible, uh, you know, superintendence and, and brilliance that's that's there. And I sense the same thing about mine, but I just haven't been able to spend time there. So I'm really looking forward to, to try and do yeah, that. Yeah, we definitely need to measure that. I want to get in there with you, actually, and measure that Alpha Omega, because be one great. other thing I've never told you that I noticed about it that is profound, possibly, is that if you go to the bull on the wall, the north wall of the king's chamber, you'll see that there's a diamond shape in the center of the bull, right over the heart of the bull. And there are very deliberate lines that you can see coming down on both sides, right? Yeah. And if you look closely, you can actually see there's also an inverted line going up on both sides. So there's an inverted diamond also. Yeah. Now, this reminds me, and it's slightly offset. It's not perfectly on center. It reminds me, in fact, of if you took two of the uh, of the triangles to make one inverted and one, you know, just going straight up, you could create the exact shape, in fact, of the Orion constellation. And that offset is matched on the King's Chamber wall as the Orion constellation is as well. That's what gives the belt, instead of the belt being a straight across shape, it gives it the shape that's more at a slant, okay? What's interesting about your Alpha Omega on the wall that you discovered is there's a similar dynamic because there's an offset of the way the one triangle coming down is matching up with the one triangle coming up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I do. And, I've and seen I that believe diamond. that we're going to find. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to find that there's some correlation there uh, to that. Let me ask you this real quick because I didn't know about that alpha and omega you discovered in the antechamber. Is that alpha and omega combined, or are they separated like yours on the coffer? They're combined. Combined. I'll show it to you. We have yeah, a picture is, of it. Yours is the only one that's separated because there's 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 several Alpha and Omegas in the Great Pyramid. They're always combined, except for the one you discovered, where the Alpha and Omega are separate. And I think that is. Uh, oh, you mean when you say combined, you're talking about like the way you have it. It's like yeah. superimposed on top of one another. Yes. Versus yes. the one that are separated next to. So so 
Okay, the antechamber is like the one on the sarcophagus. It's oh, one next to the next. Yeah. Very interesting. We'll talk more about it later. Thank you. That's very interesting. Yep. Excellent. And all the ones in Saqqara, as I think about it, are combined. Yeah, I think it's, it's very significant that just the antechamber and the king's chamber, they're separate. I could talk more about that, but that, that's very interesting. Interesting indeed. Okay. So uh, what makes you excited about this trip, Andrea? Oh, here we go. Um, magic. Okay, magic. Oh, so I thought it was one word. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you've experienced magic in Egypt before, but why this one? Why different this time? Oh, why this one? Oh, because it's a new set of like unique energetic signatures coming with all different intentions, faculty and participants alike, as well as the expanding group at home that are tuning in from there. I remember last year when you did that, the downloads and what they had to share was just... Um, coincidentally so aligned with what happened throughout the day that they wouldn't have known. So it's just that continuous confirmation of the entanglement and uh, shared intention. So yeah, just everything that can kind of come about that way. Um, oftentimes, whatever is discovered ends up kind of trickling into your field, whether it be since the focus this time is water and the geometry of that we're walking bodies of water so what we can discover and bring about more coherence with there and the understanding and the integration into our body it, it's a dna you know upgrade so cross the board very exciting no no absolutely and i think you know every time i've gone it's felt um there's something very my last trip especially which i didn't host this group it was the, when i took the crypto group and i spent the night in the great pyramid on 423, which is Shakespeare's birthday. It also happened to be the Ramadan, the height of Ramadan. It was also Passover. Uh, it was Orthodox Easter and the day of St. George who defeated the dragons and, uh, and Shakespeare's birthday as well. And I had a, a phenomenal evening that night in the pyramid by myself where I discovered many, many new petroglyphs on the walls, more than I'd ever seen before. I have a feeling that things are accelerating definitely accelerating. Um, and I feel like we're going to be getting more and more information about the builders, why they did it, what its purpose was. I feel like we're also going to really be able to fully decrypt uh, the connection. We're on the verge now, just that this is pure intuition, of figuring out the connection between the Sphinx and the pyramids. I see the Sphinx as like the hand of a clock except that the clock, instead of the clock being something that the hand is what moves, because we are moving in, you know, within our galaxy, we're the part that's moving, the hand stays stationary, right? And the Sphinx is the hand. So I, I, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of new knowledge that comes as a result of this, and many, many new discoveries are gonna come as a result. And the thing I loved about our last trip in 2021 was how all of the virtual past participants were participating with us. Like literally participating with us on everything, giving us clues and hints like they were with us the whole time. I highly encourage you to do that. And I'll say this also that very soon we're going to be opening up the uh, virtual chat on Telegram. Uh, and, uh, and Eden, before we finish, can you give the details on that as well so that uh, people will know and be ready for that when that happens? And... You know, we're, we're, uh, we're just very, very excited about what's going to be coming up. Let's see, who else? Luna, what are you excited for? I'm, I'm really excited for the spontaneity and the synchronizations that happen so quickly in Egypt. So I don't know what I'm not aware of in my life, but I'm really excited for discovering it. Because every time Egypt, it was like a mind-blowing effect on my life yeah thank you thank you luna and taylor what about you there we go um i think what's so incredible about these egypt trips is that you know even though 
some of us have been several times, no one trip is similar to the one before it. And that's because of all of the unique perspectives and energy that all the participants bring. And it's so rewarding as a filmmaker to be able to just sit back, fly on the wall, and just watch it unfold. And really to watch the participants bring so much to the table. Like this trip is just as much about the participants as it is everybody here. And it's just such a special experience to have that unique container that is this two week trip that will only ever transpire in this exact way with this group. So it's really special. Well, and with that, and with that Taylor, I wanna just say that you'll notice that uh, we have a lot of more women on the faculty and you know with the administrative group this year and i think that's by design because you know we're going only going to spend a day in giza we're going to do the nighttime and the pyramids and all that jazz right and it's going to be a great time but then we're quickly going down the nile and anyone that's been down the nile knows that there's a decidedly different feeling when you go down the nile the nile is far more feminine feeling than the Giza Plateau, which feels very masculine. It's a beautiful energy. As soon as you get to Philae and, you know, you sort of land and one of the first places you go often is, is to Philae, you just feel this total different energy. It's so subtle and feminine and beautiful. And I think that's a, a key aspect of this particular trip. And last time we were in, uh, down the Nile, we went to Dendera which if you've never been to Dendera before, it's as magical as any place I've ever been. I've spent 11 nights in the pyramid. I had probably my most profound experience with time differential uh, that I have ever had. And, and actually Taylor caught it all on film uh, along with, uh, with Tim. And while I've always been able to, for a long time, I could always remote view the future I've always used that in business. I've always just used it. I've always been able to know what's going to happen before it happens. And I can see things before they happen. Sometimes I see them too far in advance, which then takes too long of a wait for that time to actually come. But it does always come. And I've always had that ability. And some have said it was psychic ability. Uh, you know, some just said it was an amazing business intuition. I could predict trends and read tea leaves. But while I have been able to remote view at distances, uh, you know, I'd say for the better part of 25 years, even probably longer, I've never been in a situation where when I was remote viewing, I was observed back by the people there. And that happened for the first time in Dendera. So I actually experienced what I would call a time travel experience. And, and the veil of time, because when you consider that time is all one, it's all now. It means that really the mm -hmm. only thing that we can call time is just the persistent perception that we have that it's flowing one direction. So by changing our perception and transcendence of duality, then you can start to experience different time dimension. And I found myself, and you filmed it all, uh, in a different time dimension, uh, actually getting yelled at and chewed out by this woman, right, that was in the room and uh, I'll never forget it. It was a highly emotional experience. But don't be surprised if you have experiences like this when you're in Egypt. We had, I mean, some really, really amazing channelings that happened on the last trip as well. Um, you know, with some pretty incredible, you know, the people that join this trip tend to be very connected to other dimensions. And, and so this is going to be an experience that you've probably never experienced before unless you've been with us before. So each time it tends to kind of go to the next level, and I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. So, Tim, what are you looking forward to? You know, every time that I've, uh, really specifically the last time that I went to Egypt, I just had my, my lid blown wide open. And I've never experienced anything like that before. And I was just like this pure vortex for, for information and everything that was being said. Um, and so I was just feeling so much. And so I'm really excited this time to go back there to feel it all again, but this time be able to process a lot of it. 
and uh, to be able to maybe think differently about the experiences that I had last time. But, you know, like Taylor had mentioned before, and Andrea, like the energy of this entire crew is something that's magical and something that's so unique and so um, special. So I'm really excited to also connect with everyone and to um, just be present in this trip. Catherine, what are you excited about this coming up, this upcoming trip to Egypt? Well, it's, it'll be my first time. So I'm looking forward to all the magic and also remembering the wisdom of the past. Yeah, absolutely. And Alan, Shit, I'll let you again. have the, uh, the final word on what do you think we're going to be experiencing on this trip that you're excited so about. Annoying. I think everyone's touched on it in, in some shape or form. The feminine intuitional aspect is always enormous and long, long overdue, of course, as we know. So uh, I, I hope we're adding to, uh, in some way, to the world's recognition. That the timelessness is the main thing. It doesn't exist. It's all now. And we, we know this from scriptures. We know it from great philosophers. But to experience it there in Egypt is uh, something very magical. As I said, I won't be physically with you, but I'll be there spiritually with you, uh, enjoying the whole experience. Interestingly, I was just working out. I'm going to be, I'm in LA uh, doing, you know, I'll be tying together the whole thing here of the chess match <laughs> that this whole thing is uh, and the musical aspect of it and, and I'm putting it all together here in, in, in my studio for these videos that uh, Robert and I are producing uh, which is a great undertaking and great privilege uh, but guess what I'm gonna be 10 hours difference from you and 10 hours uh, that's significant too, right? Because we're on this globe, we're spinning around, and the, 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 the fractal nature of that, it's the 10 against the what? The 12 hours, half day, the 12, it's the 10, the 12, it's the 5 to 6, it's the hex of Pentacus that is extremely significant in all the geometry that we, we are tying together here uh, uh, of the plateau and, and the way the three pyramids uh, fall together in this grail of geometry. So. Just remember that, 10 hours difference, it's cool. Of course, I'll be probably broadcasting to you at four in the morning. Thank you very much, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> time, time doesn't exist and I'm usually up, as Robert well knows, I'm always up at four in the morning anyway. That's when we have our most heated conversations. So uh, looking forward to that. That's exciting to me to experience it via the this time difference and at the same time uh, creating something quite beautiful for for the, the, the legacy that this entire team is, is, is giving us. I mean, the talent here is just beyond phenomenal, right? I don't need to name you all one by one. You're all there on the screen and you're all there watching those of you who are coming, who are going to be part of it and contributing just as much as Robert said, you know, everyone is connected. There's only one of us, right? There's just one, there's one one consciousness. We are tricking ourselves into thinking we're in different bodies. Uh, and temporarily we are. But that but you're all we are all it. We are all the whole the whole deal. And so it's a great privilege to be coming back together as a as a family and creating something that future generations will look back on and go well they'll say, Holy shit, these guys were hard. They did something amazing, bringing together the truth uh, <clears throat> that has been uh, all hidden there. It's, it's been sitting there waiting. My first experience, I'll just, I'll just say this now, then I'll shut up. The first time I was there was with John Anthony West in 2014. And when I stood there and saw the Great Pyramid for the first time, uh, Catherine, you will experience this. This is your first time and you're going to go, oh my God, I had no idea. Because pictures don't do it justice, right? Do they, Larry? Or I mean, you, you can't, you cannot, you cannot even imagine what that experience is. The first time you see it from the Mena House, and you go, "Oh my God! It has stood here, timeless, for longer than any than the human history that we are even aware of." I mean, our knowledge of human history goes back maybe 2,500 years, if that. 
and it's been there according to the official story 4,500 years but that's bollocks <laughs> it's really been there for 12 or 13,000 years at least it has witnessed everything that we even know vaguely anything about in every great master from Christ to uh, probably uh, all, all all the others they've all been there in the king's chamber it's an initiatory experience right and you look at it for the first time and you think what's it saying it's saying look at me right the egyptian splatter hieroglyphs on every square inch of everything that's, that's ever done right except this one. Oh no there's no hieroglyphs there except the big one there's one ginormous hieroglyph <laughs> the app is <laughs> <laughs> And the, you know that no one is that, that no one really is aware of until you climb up there, like uh, like I I did in, on the last trip, and and find the word Devere carved into the altar, truth, holy of holies. I mean, it's sitting, it's just sitting there, and it is saying, "Look at me. I have witnessed everything that you're even vaguely aware of, and I have been here, timeless." It's just sitting here. What is my message? My message is look at me. Look at my structure. The mathematics and the geometry hidden in it tells you everything about music, art, the, 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 the balance of left brain, right brain, alchemy. It's all there. So enjoy it if it's your first experience or if it's your 14th or 15th like Larry Paul. <laughs> it's, it, it never grows old. Um, but the, just, just look at it with that thought in mind. It has sat here witnessing everything silently. Why was it built so perfectly? So that we would think about it. And so that we would Maybe that's it. the sage silent. It is, yes. Yes, a very wise thought uh, for, La for Larry to have ma made that name, sage silence. Very good, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's about. It's so, my God, wonderful experiences ahead for all of us. Thank you guys, I love you all. I can't imagine doing this with anyone else besides this, uh, this team. And um, I'm so grateful to have everyone here. I think we're gonna have an incredible journey. Uh, as this story of the hero's journey continues its unfolding so that we remember who we are. And then have that embody into a new world experience. Because the world is really just us seeing ourselves. We don't see the world or experience the world as it is. We experience it as we are. I see the Great Pyramid as a mirror of consciousness. It's actually a mirror reflection of our own level of consciousness. The higher level of consciousness we achieve, the more mysteries get revealed of the Great Pyramid. And I believe that its purpose was 90. 9% a spiritual purpose for the ascension of human consciousness on planet Earth as we go through cycles of time and forget that time is not linear. <coughs> so therefore, we go back through these cycles so we can learn and it helps us to wake up, to remember who we are and why we're here, what the purpose of our life actually is. And I think we're on the verge of figuring that out. You're invited to join us. So excited to have you with us and much love to you all. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and a great weekend.